What's going on guys? Welcome to the first ever NHL 24 Washington Capitals franchise mode series. Now some of you might be wondering what happened to my Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode series as we only did four of the 10 episodes. If you guys missed it, I had a couple posts. Basically, I lost every single save file in franchise mode. I don't know how it happened. So unfortunately, the series was pretty much done after that. If you guys wouldn't mind leaving a thumbs up on this video, just kind of help me out after losing all my save files. I'd really appreciate it. I put it to a poll and the overwhelming majority of you just said to restart rather than you know trying to redo the trades and stuff. So that's what we're doing. And in that poll on YouTube, Washington Capitals won. 10,000 of you voted, so uh, thank you guys so much for that. I also had the poll on Twitter where the San Jose Sharks actually won and Washington finished second. So YouTube had a lot more votes, which is why we're definitely going with the YouTube results here. But I will say that for sure San Jose will be the next series I do after Washington. So you guys can stay tuned for that. As you guys can see here, the Washington Capitals top players, John Carlson, Alex Ovechkin, Darcy Kemper. Definitely like a different team than I'm used to. This is a team that, you know, has some players that if we do a couple moves right now, I think could compete. But definitely, you know, once Ovechkin retires, Carlson's no longer good, Backstrom, Kuznetsov, all those guys, uh, they'll definitely need a full-blown rebuild. So I'm hoping uh, we can compete for the first three or so years, but by 2026, I'd like to get that first overall pick and land Gab McKenna. As you guys can see, right out of the gate, we're 90 overall. It actually has us tied with the Devils there as the third slash fourth highest rated team in the Metro. And as always, guys, for this series, I'm going to have owner mode turned off, side caps on, um, Fog of War is turned off, same with player morale. Also too guys, as always, injuries are turned off, just cannot be bothered. Franchise mode length there's 25 years, but as always, I'm going to end it after the 10th season. Uh, difficulty superstar if it matters. Sorry caps on, trade difficulty will be set to hard, just to make it a bit more difficult on us. And in terms of the advanced settings here, sim engine scoring to medium, shot to to high, draft class quality and prospect quality all set to low, but what I'm thinking is actually after like the first three years, so probably in 2026, once like all the real life prospects are gone, besides from McKenna and I think one other guy, I'm gonna bump these both to medium. Also too, you guys are gonna have attribute effects here set to nine out of 10, just to make it more realistic in terms of good teams seeming good and bad teams seeming bad. And now for this franchise mode, guys, I'm gonna be using Vassy's roster update two as the custom roster. I gotta thank you guys all for downloading mine. Over 7,000 downloads is insane, but I made that like in 24 hours just to have a day one roster. Vassy's put a ton of work in, as you can see in the description, uh, more than 70 new creative prospects. And that's on top of the original 330 created players so he's got 400 created prospects in total he's also adjusted you know some player aids and things like that so very excited to try this out i haven't looked at the roster too much that way you know it's a bit of a mystery for me what the prospects can be rated but definitely guys if you're on the xbox series x give his roster a try he's put a ton of work into this thing all right guys for another franchise well i'm going to show you what this team is looking like to start i plan on making at least one maybe two trades here uh, before we get started with the sim have uh, you guys noticed a bunch of pop-ups because i'm actually recording this on a second account to try and avoid losing my save file i'm never going to go on online modes with this account and hopefully That'll fix it. Obviously, Ovechkin there, top player. Going to put up a bunch of goals. Going to have him playing with either Kuznetsov or Backstrom, feed him the puck. You got Tom Wilson, who unfortunately has got that big contract. It's not going to show here, but he's making, I think, six and a half the next seven after this year. So he's on the team until he's like 36. Oshie's up there in age. He's now 36, which is honestly kind of crazy. Strom, Pacioretty is actually really good and healthy. He's also 34. Milano, Backstrom's 35. That's what I mean. Like, we got about three years, I'd say, max. Try and win one more cup here with Ovi. And honestly, get another look at all these age. I would say our window's probably two years. Uh, luckily, on defense, we do have John Carlson there. He's, again, 33, though. Uh, you look at the rest of the D. I mean, Sandine's actually, I think, very solid. I'm um, trying to get the best chemistry we can there. I literally just looked at the line. Darcy Kemper's a pretty good goalie. Charlie Lindgren backing him up's not terrible. Now, in terms of, like, good young players in the AHL, we got Mira Shachenko, who thinks... Going to turn to a player for sure. He's actually high top six here with Vassy's roster, so definitely he'll be good. McMichael there as well isn't too bad. Protus probably ends up being like a decent third line center, fourth line at worst. Hendrix LaPierre also is a pretty decent prospect. The thing is, none of these guys are really like franchise players, which is why um, after we're, you know, done trying to compete these next two years, we're going to have to tank really hard to get a solid player. And I'll show you guys our trade assets here too, just in terms of picks and everything like that. Also, I was looking at the coaching staff. Unfortunately, the game did not give us an A head coach here to start. We got uh, Muir here, who's a B. I'm fine with it, though. I looked at, like, other head coaches. There's no A for agents available. The best to be minus. So we'll probably keep him. If he does, you know, go up in rating, whatever. Um, obviously, I like to keep him the whole way. Like, we can kind of have, you know, your record at the end, seeing all the presidents, trophies, Stanley Cups, as well as just, like, your win percentage for the whole franchise. So um, like I was saying, guys, you look at this here. I think pretty much all of our prospects were shown, except for Ryan Leonard. He's gone as a high top six, which I think is pretty fair. You could even argue four medium elite draft picks there. We still have our first round pick this year, some other late picks. Again, in real life, you look at the Capitals, they're definitely kind of in no man's land. Not really good enough to win a Stanley Cup, nor bad enough to finish last, which is why I'm going to try and make them good enough to at least make the playoffs here the first couple years. And even if, you know, we fall short, we got to try, I think, with this core. 
Afterwards, of course, we are going to tank hardcore. So, I'm um, looking at free agents. Patty Kane, 84 overall, 1.9 million. Uh, just like me, Vassy's kind of nuked his rating quite a bit. He's actually lowered him even more than I did, but he still has sick puck skills, still has 95 offensive awareness. I don't know if anyone's going to like this, but I feel like we have to try and make a play at Patrick Kane. We'd have to make a trade first as well to like clear a bit more cap space, but I think it's worth it. Like Kane's that good. He'd honestly fit our window perfectly. He's only going to be good for the next couple seasons. All right, guys, so I'm going to try and trade away here. Sonny Milano, he's 27, making 1.9 for the next three years. I feel like that's going to be pretty easy to trade away. He's also got the It's Tricky X Factor. Um, I feel like there's obviously worse contracts, but it's on veterans who I'm fine trying to win with. Also, to look at the defense here, like Jensen and TVR have pretty bad contracts. I feel like Jensen probably is a bit better than 81 in real life. TVR, he's a good shot blocker. He's okay defensively. Uh, three million, three years. I'm thinking like both these guys we could try and trade after the first couple years because obviously we need someone in the defense and aside from Alexiev, no one's really going to be good enough to actually make the team. And you know what guys, I actually take that back. I am trying to trade Nick Jensen right now with Sonny Milano to the National Predators for Tyson Berry in a third round pick. Uh, both burying the picks on the block. My thought process behind this is we're trying to compete right now. Carlson's on power play one. Barry's on power play two. Even though he's only 82 overall, he's still very good offensively. Uh, he's costing us extra finer K on Jensen, but we're still shining the entire Milano contract, which should be enough to sign Patrick Kane. The value's pretty equal there. We'll see what the Preds say. Trade's accepted. We're calling up McMichael. We'll see about that. He might stay in the AHL, but I think that's a very good move for us, at least for like the immediate future. And unless you guys are trying to make one more trade, the Buffalo Sabres to get Lucan in. He's actually got him here with low start potential, so not quite as high as EA's reigns at all. Uh, 80 overall there, low start at 24. Could potentially be the start of the future after Kemper, but honestly, it's more so for getting a slightly better backup than Lindgren. He's one overall higher, and he's making 300k less. At 300k, could be the difference between us signing Patrick Kane or not. Also, I need a sixth round pick on our side. Trade's accepted. Okay, so. Uh, great move for us there. I also noticed too when looking at our draft picks, we have three thirds this year as well as three seconds next year. So we're actually, you know, pretty good set up here in terms of uh, the draft. I feel like we can, you know, find some uh, late round steals. Now, next year, guys, like I said, I want to try and sign Patrick Kane. As you can see, we have like just enough to afford him. Hopefully, no one outbids us. I can give him 25k as a bonus, and that's my max offer. I'm sure other teams will be interested as well, but maybe they'll actually make it a bit more realistic, like kind of a lottery there for Kane in terms of you know where he chooses. I think. This way, it's a bit more random. Just to put Yarby there, 25, 78, low top six. Wouldn't be a terrible ad for the AHL team. Um, I'll do it after I sign Kane, just in case it somehow messes with it. And look at that, guys. Patrick Kane did say yes. Okay, so uh, he's going to be on the top line, feeding Obi the puck. Kane's obviously such a good playmaker. Obi's a great sniper. This could be the best doing in the NHL this season, if everything goes right. And now, just to put Yarby here, guys, is still available. I see we have 49 to 50 contracts. So there's a chance we'll actually be at our max. All from a league min, just for fun. I'm actually kind of surprised, you know, no one's given a chance on Pugliarvi real life yet. Speaking of, too, like the signings that made me think, uh, before I forget, I want to do some extensions. There's actually some really important ones we have to do here. So Kane, I just gave one year. He's going to ask for a lot more after this season. Uh, Patry, same thing. I don't even think I can extend him. Barry, though, I could. I see him having a pretty solid season. Three years, at least 35. I mean, if our window's the next three years, we'll need him for two more years. And I'll offer him, um, I don't know, two years, 2.5. If he says no, I'll just add like 100K until he says yes. Edmondson, I definitely don't think we have to bring back. Sandin, I want to sign now. I think, um, ooh, almost 5 million. So right now, he's probably going to be in our bottom pair. I think we could actually get him cheaper if we do wait. Um, just based on, you know, bringing in Barry. He won't be playing as much. Now, in the system here, Conrad Michael would extend as well. He's going to be in the AHL all year. And he's already asked for 3.5. So yeah, if he's in the AHL, I don't see that ask actually being a thing at the end of the season. Sometimes it makes sense to sign guys early. Other times, it doesn't. And there you go, guys. Barry accepted our extension. Uh, Pugliarvi rejected. Roster is full. I mean, that's fair enough. He was just giving the AHL anyways. All right, guys. So after those trades and signs, going to give you an updated look at the team. I feel like we should at least be able to compete for a wild card spot now after the moves we made. On that first line, we got Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, and Kane. Again, I think Kane there, you look at his puck skills, 93 passing, the deking, feeding over the puck. Kuznetsov as well isn't a bad offensive player either. 79 D awareness is pretty funny. Um, I think they're going to do well. They're getting the plus five cam. Patch right, he's healthy here. He's got a good shot. He's playing strong. And Wilson, decent second line. Third line even. Oshie, Backstrom, Mantha. Mantha can shoot the puck. Backstrom can pass the puck. Oshie can kind of do it all. I think that's a decent third. Fourth line, Opka Bell, Dowd, Protis also isn't terrible. Defensively here, you got Fairbury, Carlson on the top pair. You got Barry now in the second with Edmondson. Sandin on the bottom there with TVR. I would like Sandin to be on the second pair, but then we lose a ton of chemistry. So going to leave it as is. Plus, again, they'll help us get him up for a cheaper price next season. Goaltending wise, Kemper starting, Lukanen backing him up. In terms of power play one, I think it looks very, very solid. Uh, there's no reason why it can't be a top power play. Power play two there even looks pretty good. Again, again very quarterbacking that. 
Uh, you look at the PK here, not quite as good. I feel like we need, could use some you know, more defensive forwards on this team, but um, hopefully it's at least you know good enough to be decent and not get shelled in. I noticed our three-man PK actually gets pretty bad uh, native chemistry there, but overall, like I said, I think should be competing for a playoff spot this year. HL team-wise, pretty much no change. Matthew Phillips has dropped down there, playing with Michael and Yoshichenko on the top line, which honestly should probably dominate the HL uh, defensively. I don't think any changes there either. Goal team wise, we got a couple of mid 70s. I actually did notice though in the AHL, Matthew Strom's here, Dylan Strom's brother. I didn't even know he was on Washington's AHL team. So I thought that was pretty cool. Maybe we can uh, bring in Ryan Strom and have all three brothers reunited at some point. Now, in regards to the capacity for this team, guys, no changes. Ovi ran the C, Backstrom and Carlson and both ran A's. And before we get started saving here, I'll show you the ratings for this team. Well, Betchkin's already got 7.6 games. Uh, we're 3 2 1 the preseason, which honestly doesn't really mean a ton. So we've got 93 offense, 90 defense, 85 goal tending. Again, should be decent enough to be competitive. Let's see what happens. Also, you guys, before I forget, I should show what the scouting situation looks like. I've actually got two scouts in Russia now because I noticed they've got almost as many players as like US and the CHL league. So I think it makes sense. Then we got the two in Liga, two in SHL. Obviously, every region I want A+. Plus. Uh, the Russian, because the scouts are B, I'm letting it be an A. I got Extra Liga, Dell, two in UA East, Central, West, and then of course, two in each CHL league. I'm actually hoping to have a video tomorrow explaining how I do my scouting in depth. So keep an eye out for that. All right, guys. So right now we're at the end of December with a record of 16, 16, and two, which is good for 34 points. Uh, we're nine points out of a division spot and we're like eight points out of a wild card spot. Every single team in the Atlantic is actually doing better than we are, which is kind of crazy. So hopefully can start to, you know, pick it up a bit. I mean, the Blue Jackets are in 42 points. It's kind of crazy. I feel like this team should be doing better. Let's see, leading scorer there. Dylan Strom averaging almost a point per game. I really like that. And that's on the second line too. Miroshachenko in the AHL over a point per game. So we'll see where we're at the deadline. If we're doing even worse, could look to sell off a couple pieces. But obviously I'm hoping to squeak into the playoffs. And now this is kind of crazy, guys. We're a couple weeks away from the trade deadline. And the Tampa Bay Lightning just fired their head coach, who's essentially John Cooper. So obviously they're not happy with where they're at. Um, Alex Edler there was signed by the Blackhawks. I'm definitely not willing to step down around to get him. So I'm um, doing a little bit better here. Slightly above 500. Uh, we're still, you know, not having a playoff spot. Um, we got a couple wins there, though. We'll see kind of how we do. It's actually a three-game win streak. The Coyotes beat us. Big 9-2 win against the Penguins. So we are 31-26-4 here at the deadline, which gives us 66 points. We're eight points away from the Blue Jackets, though, who have one of the wildcard spots. Nine points away from the Panthers. Jeez. So even though we're doing a little bit better, the East is just too good. Yeah, in the West, we'd have both wildcard spots. That is crazy. So... Oh man, we were in such a tough spot. Like, I really don't know what kind of trades we're gonna make. There's just gonna have to be like the perfect trade available, basically. Ovi's actually a lean scorer now, about a point per game. Miroshichenko just under a point per game. So we'll see what's out there. Definitely not gonna be selling off too much, nor am I gonna be doing any crazy ads. Probably just gonna be looking for that perfect trade where we can get like a young piece for a, a mid-round pick or something like that. And at the trade deadline, Elijah Lindholm's actually on the block here for the Calgary Flames. One year left, I guess they can't resign him. Jeremy Swayman as well at the Boston Bruins, he often is. He's a guy we could potentially go after, maybe trade them Kemper. I'm not sure if they'd want that. Maybe trade Kemper somewhere else, make a trade for him. He'd be the goalie of the future. Uh, Dano there, Kuzmenko, Tanev, Eberle, Tarasenko, Hanif, Dumba, and Farlamov. And you know what, guys? I just realized it actually makes no sense to trade for Swayman because we're going to have a couple of rebuilding years. And the way the game works is like, if you have a really good goalie but a bad team, the goalie doesn't do well, his rating just drops drastically. It can pop up after, but I just don't even know if it's worth it to make that trade. All right, guys, so right here I'm trying to get a trade the Winnipeg Jets to get Colby Barlow's on the block. Pretty solid prospect, 1969, medium top six. Obviously, for the future, offering up Edmondson. Don't plan on bringing him back. Probably just call up Alexiev. I think our team would be fine for the last month and a half. Giving up a second round pick next year, Boston Bruins pick. Hopefully, it's a late second. I doubt we get a player as good as Barlow. Mallet's simply there for the roster spot. See what the Jets say. Value's pretty equal. Trade's going through. Okay, so we're calling up Alexiev. Again, I think that doesn't hurt our playoff chances too much, but we get a really solid piece back. Also, guys, looking at the players here, I forgot to point out some pretty solid prospects the Capitals have. Ryan Chesley there, Kobe Barlow, of course, we just added. Andrew Crystal, I think that was an absolute steal last year in the second round. We'll see what he turns into. Iorio there even, medium top four, 75 overall at 21. It's not that bad. And on this next trade here, guys, I feel is a smart one, even though it obviously it hurts our chances. St. Patrick already backed the Vegas Golden Knights with a sixth round pick in exchange for their second. Patrick has been pretty solid for us, but... One year remaining, I feel like if his price goes up a bunch, I don't know if I'd actually want to bring him back. And if we decide we do, there's a good chance he'll actually end up in free agency anyways. So we can get a second round pick back here when the writing's on the wall, like our chance to make the playoffs this season is very slim. I feel like that makes sense. Let's see what the Knights say here. Trades accepted. Okay, so I think those were a couple solid moves. 
I'll probably call up like McMichael or Phillips who uh, fill in on the third line. And hopefully, like I said, there's still a chance to make the playoffs. We're just preparing for the worst. All right, guys, so the trade deadline is now complete. I was looking at some players that actually got moved. So I think it was a pretty active one. Obviously, our trade for Pat Trey there near the end. Noel Gundler to the Kraken. Pretty uh, big prospect getting moved. Zadarov to the Penguins. Poitras to the LA Kings. Let's see. Our trade for Barlow. Chris Tanev goes to the Jets. In exchange for Lucius. Sean Monaghan there to the Lightning. Nick Paul to the Canadians. Interesting. Matt Dumba to the Jets. The Jets are very busy. Um, Owen Pickering, I was actually trying to get from the Penguins. You got traded there to the Blue Jackets. Jordan Eberle to the Bruins for Jeremy Swayman. Eberle in a fourth for Jeremy Swayman. That is a big trade. I think uh, the Kraken win that one for sure. A very good young goalie for a veteran winger. I feel like the veteran winger is much more easily replaceable. Noah Hannafin there going to Buffalo. Tarasenko to the Canes. Uh, let's see. Trevor Moore there to the Predators. They actually flipped Nick Jensen, so good for them. Wideman to the Rangers, and I think that's it. Wow, Montreal got a first-round pick and Robrek there for Weidman in two-fourths. I think Chris Weidman's trade value is probably a little bit messed up there because it makes no sense. All right, guys, so after the trade deadline, here's an update look at the team. No change to the first line. Mantha's now up on the second, replacing Pacioretty. McMichael there's on the third, replacing Mantha. Fourth line staying the same. Uh, defensively, called up Alexiev. Again, I feel like that defense is still decent enough if the team can get hot here, could make it into the playoffs. HL team as well, even though they lost McMichael, still isn't that bad. I was actually just looking at it. I think right now they are in a wild card spot, but it's close, so... Hopefully they can hold on here. And like I mentioned before, the NHL team's eight points back, but I see that they do have two games in hand, so maybe a miracle can happen. All right, guys, by the end of the season now, the record 39, 33, and 10. So we had a positive record if you count OT losses essentially as ties. Unfortunately, that was not enough to make it to the playoffs. As you can see, they had 88 points, which is like a pretty solid season, but we needed five more there to get the final wild card spot in the East. The Blue Jackets actually got that with 93. I can see in the Atlantic there. Everyone that hit the playoffs with 100 plus points. Canadians slowed down quite a bit after kind of having a hot start. I feel like 88 points, yeah, more than enough to make it in the West. In the Central, we would have been second place in the division. In the Pacific, there we would have been fourth with one of the wild card spots. So it just kind of shows you how much tougher the East is this year than the West. Um, Ovechkin there, over point per game with 85 points. Also had 48 goals, too shy of 50. Another 50 goal season would have been pretty awesome. AHL wise, Miroshichenko there, right around a point per game. Also the AHL team, where are they? are in a playoff spot. So there we go. I think I can send McMichael down hopefully too uh, once their playoffs start to kind of give them a help here now that we know the NHL team didn't make it. Kind of worst case scenario. We didn't make the playoffs nor did we finish, you know, bottom of the league, have a best chance of getting Celebrini. But I mean, at least we were competitive. Again, the first three years I kind of figured I would give, you know, core of this team a chance to win one more Stanley Cup there with Ovechkin as well as break Gretzky's goal record. And behind Ovechkin there, guys, you got Kane with 75 points. So solid season. Definitely want to bring him back if it's for the right price. Kuznetsov at 70. I think he'll definitely jump in rating. Kane definitely should too, as he was only 84. Uh, Strom, 69 points. Nice. Carlson there, 63 is not bad. Wilson put up 62. I actually didn't expect that much production from him. Barry, 44. Not bad at all. Basham, 40. Not as much as you'd hope, but he was playing third line center. Maybe we can like move Strom to the wing or something. Get Basham in the top six here. Mantha also close to 40. Should be able to take a pay cut. I'd probably bring him back if he does. Oshi 31. Everyone else there obviously just chipping in a little bit. Sanin definitely not going to be asking for 4.5 million after only putting up 12 points. Goal timing wise, Kemper here, 907 to 317. So above 900 save percentage. I feel like, yeah, it's definitely more on the team, his numbers, than his own performance. AHL wise, really, Stevenson here, I think, is an okay goalie, but don't care about either of these guys in the future. Uh, behind Miroshichenko, Phillips there, 63 points. Snively had 50. LaPierre, 45. So uh, the fact they're in the playoffs, obviously, is a nice sign. And now looking at the entire league here, guys. Matthews put up 110. Aho, 104. McDavid, 102. I am curious. So he made McDavid a 97 like me with pretty much all 99 stats. I'd make sure because he does sim well consistently. Adam Fox had 100 points. Adam Fox sims so well. Tage Thompson, Pashnak, McKinnon. Most goals here does go to Matthews, followed by Pashnak and Ranston. Ovi actually finished fourth. In terms of defensive scoring, of course, Fox gave me number one there with 100 points. Like, that is just crazy. John Carlson, though, did make it on the first page, which is nice. He was also a plus 15, even though the team was, you know, pretty average. Allmark there, the most wins with Boston, 45. Saber percentage there. Sorokin, though, 9-2-3. And then goals against here, though, goes to Samsonov. So honestly, I'm not too sure who's going to take on the Vesna. And then finally here, guys, rookie skaters. I assume it'll be Bedard. And yeah, Conor Tark put up 94 points. It's already an 88. That's crazy. Uh, Carlson there, 70. Fantilli, 60. Same with Cooley. I actually gave all three of these guys a little bit of a boost just because, you know, I think they're playing a bit more in real life. So I think Vassy had them all like one or two overall lower, but basically I wanted to see them perform like this the rookie season as that's what I'm expecting in real life. And now in terms of the entire league here, guys, I am curious. So the Maple Leafs won the President's Trophy, 111 points. You had six teams there with 100 plus. I want to know though, like, okay, Ottawa finished 11th and missed the playoffs. That is absolutely insane. So Columbus in 10th was the final wildcard team in the East. 
which means eight of the top 10 teams in the NHL were from the Eastern Conference this year. Like, that's incredible. I was curious to see if, yeah, okay, so we're literally a top half team. We're just playing in the East. Like, we finished 15th in the NHL, missed the playoffs. I mean, that's, like, unreal. So, if the East can slow down a little bit, um, I think we do have a shot at making the playoffs in one of the next two years. Seattle, they actually finished last. Not a great start to the season either for them. And in real life, they haven't had a great start to the season. So we'll see whether or not they turn around. All right, guys, we'll start the HL playoffs now. I just sent McMichael down. Hopefully, he can help this team at least win one round. We're playing Springfield here. And okay, I think we actually did beat them there three to one. That's nice. And the second round, guys, we're playing the Charlotte Checkers. Accidentally sim game one, but it was a win. I love the accidental sims where they turn out wins, but not when they're losses. We actually swept them three nothing. AHL team kind of rolling here. Next up, we got the Rochester Americans. This, of course, is the Buffalo Sabres AHL team, which is probably going to be pretty good. They got a lot of good prospects. And, yeah, they sweep us 4 nothing. So, we made the conference final. Have to be, you know, pretty happy at least about that. And the playoffs are not complete, guys. Are you kidding me? The Stanley Cup champions are the Nashville Predators? In what world? I mean, we traded them Nick Jensen, and we traded them Sonny Milano, and apparently that made them Cup champs. That is hilarious. Uh, Color Cup champs there, Rochester Americans. We lost the best team, which is nice to see, but... I gotta take a look at the playoff tree because I want to know how did Nashville win the Stanley Cup? Uh, Seattle there taking first overall, gonna get Celebrini. Chicago at two. We're picking 14, so not the best spot at all. Definitely gonna have to trade some picks, try and move up at least to the, like the top 10 where there should still be some elite players. Yershchenko 13 points in 11 playoff games, pretty good there. Again, the playoff tree like Nashville, I didn't even think was doing that good at the deadline. I want to say they were slightly above 500. Let's take a look here. So Nashville Predators beat the Blues in five, Abs in six. Kings in five, and then the Red Wings in five. The Red Wings in the Stanley Cup final this year. I would absolutely love that. Obviously, I'm not holding out too much hope, though. In terms of the awards, so I think the team awards, we know all of those. Individually here, Matthews, Art Ross. Hart Trophy, though, goes to Dreisaitl. Fox, James Norris. Suzuki, Lady Bing. Bedard got the Calder, of course. Forsberg, Conn Smythe. Sorokin, Vesna. Samsonov, though, got the William Jennings. Lindgren, Bill Masterton. LA coach, Jack Adams. I feel like that should have went to the national coach or the Red Wings coach. Uh, O'Reilly Selkie Trophy, Matthews, Ted Lindsay, along with the Marisha Shard. So big year for Matthews. AHL wise, Rochester Americans there when they called their cup. And I didn't even realize this, guys, but we actually finished with the best regular season in the East. So that's pretty cool to see. Of course, that means we won our division two. Um, in terms of the individual awards, Jack Drury there, most points. Coronado, MVP. Colin White, most goals. Coronado, best rookie. Honka, their best defenseman. Levi, best goalie. Buffalo didn't have an NHL. Interesting. So he probably needs to be a bit higher rated for that to happen then. Uh, Rusek, MVP of the playoffs. Mirosachenko, sportsmanship. Okay, we get something. Sean Day, community involvement. And then Levi there also had lowest goals again. So, um, interesting awards. I actually want to take a look and see that National Predators team that won the Cup. Like, what other moves do they make? Because if they won the Cup with, like, the team that they have right now, that is insane. All right, so let's look through here, guys. I mean, Nyquist went up in rating. Same with Novak. That's right. They made that trade for Trevor Moore, flipping Nick Jensen after we gave him to them. Milano, of course, we gave them. It looks like they added Trevor Moore, and that's about it. Wow, maybe uh, Saros just absolutely stood on his head in the playoffs because right now, not being able to make much sense of this one. I mean, yeah, okay, 9-3-4 Saber Sand, just pretty good. Uh, I went on a crazy run, but uh, Cinderella's story there for the Preds, good for them. And before we get to the trade deadline, guys, I actually want to offer an extension here to Patty Kane to see if he's willing to sign, because if not, obviously, uh, I'd be willing to trade him. Four and a half million for the next two years. I offered him exactly what he wanted since he's not just an extension, so... Hopefully that way he'll say yes. Hopefully too we'll hear back from him before the trade deadline, which is only two days away. Retired players here, Dubinsky, Strawman, Ablocator. Doesn't really look like anyone of note. Uh, Halak there, the only goalie. We haven't heard back from Kane yet, so definitely just not going to be trading him at the draft. Hopefully he will accept the offer. Now speaking of the draft, guys, we'll take a look here at the draft class and we'll see how our scouts did. Macklin Celebrini there. Of course going first overall. Should be Canadian though. I gotta let Vassy know. Celebrini is Canadian. We gotta honor, you know, those top Canadian prospects. Uh, looking at gems here, Perez, medium top four, going to go in the second round. This guy here is a bust. Okay, uh, I was wondering what was going on there. Now, based on potential. So you got Demidov here who's guaranteed medium lead. Unfortunately, he's going third overall. The rest of the guaranteed medium leads are also top 10. After that, just a bunch of guys who could be medium lead or could not. So hopefully we get lucky. All right, guys. And now next year, I'm trying to get trade the Dallas Stars who have the sixth overall pick on the block, probably because they expect to be a good team this year. So they're not really looking to get a prospect. I'm offering them the 14th pick plus the third rounder somehow the value is pretty equal i don't know how like usually it costs a lot more maybe dallas doesn't really think there's gonna be a great player available at that spot we'll see what they say to this it's amazing value if they do say yes trades rejected okay um i was honestly a little bit worried there 
I feel like we could give up a couple, you know, thirds, or maybe we could give up a player they like. All right, guys, so out of the Avalanche, second round pick 2025 to this trade. Hopefully enough to move up from 14 to six. It's definitely a lot more fair now. When I thought just a third round pick might've got to go through. Stars still reject, uh, quite close to fair value. Okay, I mean, we're getting them through 24s. We could make it, we actually don't have that many picks 2025, all right. Um, throw on like a 2026 20, 7. They're just trying to, you know, suck us for everything they can. There we go. So I'm um, really happy with that. I'll sim to our pick here. Uh, Levshinov actually goes fifth overall. 76 medium elite. You got Demidov before him. Cool. Iserman. Allman here, who's a made up guy. He was from France. Eighth overall at draft. Immediately potential. You can see there he's got an insane shot. Uh, Celebrini, of course, first overall, 79 high elite. The reason I traded up, the main reason, I want Berkeley Cat. I think he's going to be one of the better picks we can get at this spot. Kind of surprised I have no information on him, even though I have two WHL scouts with A-plus accuracy in that region, but that's all right. As you guys can see there, 74 medium late. I'm very happy with that. Now, uh, soon to our next pick here at 52. I will quickly go show you guys the rest of the first rounds. After we took Cat and Helenus there went 7. Dickinson actually went 8 to the Sharks. Kivaharju, 9. Celiev, 10. Uh, Lundstrom there, 77 medium elite. The Flames got a great pick. Connolly, Chernyshaw, Jerry Check there, the starter, so with our pick. Perek, Bosford there, Henry Muse, the medium top four, okay. So aside from the Flames, no real steals. Now, having said that, I think we might be able to land a really nice pick here, guys. So um, I think I showed you before I pinned him, and that's this Perez dude. 99% sure he's made up. Guaranteed medium top four. I didn't realize he's actually already NHL ready. So he's gonna be very high rated. Let's take a look here. And 77 medium top four at the end of the second round. That's an absolute steal. And look at that. He's also got a few X factors here too. And now next year, guys, I'm trying to move up once more with the Rangers. Offer them a third and a fifth round pick for their late second. They say no, just a bit low. Okay, I could do a third and a fourth here. If I get the guy I want, I think he'll be well worth it. So I got to hope here the Sharks don't take our guy. Uh, Tidja Glindle actually goes there. Pick 22 in round two. That's kind of a cool pick. So uh, there's two players here I was actually looking at. Um, I think Andronov, though, is the better one. Both could be medium elite. He's got uh, Marcel Dion, similar style, with NHL ETA one year. Liston here, NHL ETA was two years. So uh, Liston was the backup. Andronov here we're going to take. And 72 medium top six in the second round. That's another absolute steal. But look at this, guys. We might have messed up. Two picks later, the Flames take Vinny. 66 medium elite. Uh, could have been our goalie of the future, but that's all right. And our next pick here, guys, is the last pick in the third round. So far, pretty happy with how this draft's gone for us. Uh, Caleb Heal, we got two goalies. Both could be medium elite. NHL ETA, potentially two years. His is guaranteed three. Let's take uh, Caleb Heal. If we can actually land a medium elite goalie there, that'd be awesome. Definitely make up for missing out on Vinny. And he's a medium starter, but he's 65 overall. Like, that's not too bad. And our next pick here, guys, is in the fifth round. Hopefully, I can have another solid pick. I believe this is actually our last pick of the draft. Uh, Nemesikov, I know for a fact, is not medium elite. We could take Salo here, guaranteed medium fringe starter goalie. Uh, really, there was no one even worth taking a chance on. He's only a 47, but for our last pick, I don't mind that at all. And there we go, guys. Kane did say yes. The offer made him. So honestly, at this point, don't have too many players to resign other than Sandin. We got almost $11 million in cap space. Again, all of our top players there. Mantha should want a lot less. Yeah, 2.5 for two years. We got like two years left to compete. Um, actually, I don't know why I'm giving him extra. Probably say yes to like 2.4. Sandin will qualify for 1.4, but we'll see what he's asking for. So Ask has come down. I think he'll be a good defenseman, honestly. Uh, especially if he gets a bit more ice time here playing the top four this season. Let's see. I wouldn't mind uh, eight years. Six million might be a lot. If he's like at 83. I think he's in the five. That's a pretty fair salary. Although, if we're trying to compete for these next two years, let's try and get him as cheap as we can for these two years while we're competing. And then pay him extra after that when we have a lot more cap space once Ovechkin, Carlson, uh, Backstrom, all their contracts are up. McMichael here one year i mean he'll probably be in our top nine so let's see again let's try and keep it cheap for right now let's try two years there at 1.75 abka bell could be on the fourth line but he wants one and a half honestly he could probably find somebody better for cheaper matthew phillips i wouldn't mind just bringing back i feel like we didn't really give him enough shot in the nhl portis here as well try to get locked up for the next couple years and honestly perez here could be an ahl defenseman for us at 77 so make him an offer and i just went through guys releasing all the players on bad contracts basically just a bunch of ahl players who you know were like 23 to 26, high 60s, low 70s, terrible potential. In terms of the goaltending, I wouldn't mind bringing Lukanen back as the backup. Uh, 1.5, let's see if he'll take 1.5 for two years. Stevenson, 25, 77, isn't terrible. We got Shepard there under contract though. We'll see if we can sign a better AHL starter. If not, we could just bring Stevenson back. And so Lukanen said yes to the offer. Same with Mantha, Phillips as well. Uh, Sandine wants more money. 
McMichael though said yes. So I'll offer Sandin three and a half or two. I'm actually paying him more money now, which should make him say yes. And there we go. I think that's still pretty fair. Also, Protis said no, but offered him like an extra 100k. So uh, we still have almost 5 million cap space, which we could use to get a top 6 defenseman. Right now it's Alexiev, who's kind of good enough, kind of not. Could also potentially bring in a forward. The only thing is, it's like another 85. We have a bunch of those guys. What we really need is a star player, which unfortunately... We don't really have the cap space for. So to start free agency now, guys, again, we're looking for like that perfect player to fit this team. Wow, Petey, obviously RFA, I'm sure, yeah, but he wants 12 million bucks. Lindholm's looking for 11. I heard in real life he wanted nine, which I thought was too much money. Connor Brown wants 10. What did he do playing with McDavid? He put up 74 points. That's still a ridiculous ask by him, come on. Brandon Montour also wants almost 10. Uh, there's a team interested in Connor Brown at uh, 10 million bucks and 84. Whatever team signs that, uh, that GM deserves to be fired. That team deserves not to have any success. Um, we're going to have a tough time here, I think, finding somebody of value for, you know, a little under 5 million bucks. But I'm going to give my best shot. Thomas Novak, 85. Tyler Bertuzzi, 85 overall for 3.8. That would actually be a great player. 26 goals, 30 assists last year. Probably, you know, playing with Matthews obviously helped that. But that's a very fair ask from him. Could also get a guy like Brady Shea. Could get Matthew Shane. 84 overall. He had 53 points last year. He's a playmaker. Forcing as well is a chance we could get, but probably out of our price range. Patch already is there. Could bring him back, but I feel like Tyler Bertuzzi might make more sense. He's kind of a more dynamic player. The fact there's a couple X factors as well I really like. Now, Bertuzzi does want five years. I don't know. I mean, that'd be pay him until he's 34, which isn't the worst. And honestly, like, this is a pretty good value. I'll offer him four million bucks. And uh, we'll see what he says. Definitely have some pretty decent players, I think, in the AHL. But that's because we have just so many, like, 78, 79 overall forwards. Um, Gold tenny wise Samson up to an 88, wants paid. Swimming as well, but he is an RFA. So, um, NHL goalies were good. We do need an AHL starter. Um, let's see. Prospetov. Honestly, Rodriguez, 23, 77, high fringe. Why are the others not signing him? He's going to be our AHL starter for sure. We'll try and do three years at 975K on a two-way. Also, if you're looking at two-way players here, Kovalenko, 24-76, low elite. Avalanche drafted him. I mean, why not just uh, give him an offer? We have the contract spots. Krasov there. Best line in two. Lassie Thompson. I feel like probably give the top three guys all offers. And, you know, worst case, they're just gone after a couple years in the AHL. Actually, you know what, guys? Lassie Thompson will make an offer on. Krasov and best line in, though, I feel like aren't as good as some of these, like, high top nines. 23-78 for Clark. Much better chance of him, you know, turning to a player. Same rating, but his potential is kind of more of a guaranteed. So give him an offer there. Try and find anyone else that's like 23 on the younger side, 77, 78. Luke Tuck here actually, still only 22, 73. High top nine, he makes a ton of sense. Goncaz here as well. Also too, I'm looking at coaches now and there's a couple A head coaches available. Iku's here, I honestly have no idea how you'd say that last name as well as Prosser. The first guy has 63% team fit, the next one's 58. So I'm gonna try and get this first guy signed. Five million bucks, but honestly an A head coach is so big in this game. like can be the difference between a middling team making the playoffs or not, which is obviously what we are. So uh, I think in the next couple of years, he'll help us make the playoffs. And then after that, when we're rebuilding, maybe he'll make us too good. So I'll just make sure we like completely dismantle the team entirely. Now, obviously we get him. I got to fire our current head coach, which is fine. And you know what guys, all I've got left right now is one associate coach. I'm just going to completely clean house here <laughs> for the last couple of years, trying to get Obia Stanley Cup and uh, bring in all new coaches, see what happens. All right guys, so Rodriguez here rejected our offer. Doesn't want a two way, which is fine. We'll try and Get him on a one-way. Lassie Thompson, though, accepted. He'll be in the AHL. Same with Goncavs there. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. Clark. Uh, Kovalenko as well. Tuck. Still waiting to hear back from Bertuzzi. Our head coach rejected the offer. Doesn't feel the quality of the roster matches the challenges he's willing to take on. So he doesn't want the challenge of, you know, trying to get this team to playoffs. Bertuzzi, though, said yes. I'll have to make another offer on that head coach. Um, ooh, wow. We get a third-round pick for a low top nine prospect. Thank you very much. All right, guys, so that head coach finally said yes. Just had to offer him extra 500K. And since we have 1.7 million cast space, guys, I'm going to try and sign Scandella here. One-year deal. Uh, defensive defenseman, honestly, is what we need as well. So uh, we'll see if he says yes. I think he'd be probably better, at least for this year, than Alexiev. Alexiev go back to the HL next year. He can take over his spot. After that, I think we're actually going to be set. Is the team going to be, you know, good enough to make the playoffs? We'll see. But, uh, oh, wow, Scandella went with the Flames instead. So... Maybe we get like Eric Johnson there, I saw. There's still some other players. Actually, Johnson's gone now. Freddy's, you got Chatfield here. I'm basically just curious what the defense awareness. 87, shot block, and he's got 90 stick check. Better than Bertuzzo. Okay, yeah, we're going Chatfield here for sure. He wants 1.8, two teams interested. 
We'll make our best offer and see what happens. He said, no, based on the high quality of our roster, we not get enough playing time. That's so funny because the head coach of the opposite, our roster wasn't good enough. Basically, he was going to be stressed out <laughs> trying to uh, get us into the playoffs. So what do we even have left here for defensemen? Bertuzzo and Dermot. Again, I'm just curious with like defense awareness, 86. Okay, so it's Bertuzzo. He'll do fine. One year, one and a half million. I just want him on the bottom pair there. Somebody to play some defense. I just got this random trade offer, guys, from the Red Wings. A third and a fourth for a third and a fifth plus Dubay. Low HL top six, which is nothing. So moving up around for free. I'll take that every day. And now the Sharks just offered us Matt Benning and Gergen same with a seventh for a third and a fourth. I mean, Matt Benning, I wish they would have done this before we signed Bertuzzo. What's his rating? Uh, he's an 80 right on. Okay. And then Gergen 79. It would be an okay fourth line center, but... Um, I feel like we'll have enough guys to uh, fill that spot. And now we're in the fall, guys. I totally forgot to give Rodriguez an offer. Luckily, no one else did either. Not sure why. 2479 high fringe is actually really good. Um, if we can get him now for three years at like 950k, that'd be a steal. And there we go. He did say yes. All right, guys. So for the start of next season, I'll show what the team is looking like. Again, we're definitely not like a true contender, but I think with the A head coach, this team could get in. So... First lines now Ovechkin, Strom, and Kane. Strom's now an 86. And I think Ovechkin and Kane also both went up by one overall. Second line there is Wilson, who's net saw Bertuzzi. I feel like that's going to be a line no one wants to play against. Uh, third line, you got McMichael, playing with Backstrom, and Mantha. Fourth line is Oshi, Dowd, and Lapierre. So, like, forward wise, I think we're pretty good. Uh, Kane plays a lot better than 85. Defensively here, Barry, Barry, and Carlson on the top pair. We've got TBR, Santa on the second, with Bertuzzo, Barry on the bottom. I feel like Barry should actually be on the second pair, even though. The chemistry is not as good. So like that top 4D isn't that bad. In terms of the goaltending, Kemper's actually down to 85, which sucks. But uh, Lucan is up to an 81, so something there to look forward to. Uh, Rodriguez in the AHL starting 79. Again, I think we got a great contract on him. First line as well. Miroshchenko, Phillips, and Clark is stacked. The rest of the AHL forwards, not too bad. We could sign like some more guys. We got some 60s here. So maybe we'll sign a couple AHL forwards to start our next episode. In terms of the defense, Alexiev and Perez on the top pair. Perez we just drafted, already 77. Like this dude's gonna make the NHL very soon. Uh, Lassie Thompson, Iorio on the second pair with LeMay and Chesley on the bottom. So I feel like especially once we sign a couple guys, the NHL team's gonna be looking really good. Now, uh, before we end the episode, guys, I'll show you the ratings for next season. Again, I think the X Factor is definitely that new head coach. Hopefully, can kind of push us in here. As you can see, we've got 96 offense, 90 defense, 84 goal tiny. So excited to see what happens in the next episode. Hopefully we can win OB one more cup, but that's gonna be it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed it, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.